Bro, I heard this last year. Yeah, I did this too. We were here last year. I wasn't here last year. Bro, that's amazing. Nice <laughs> Oh, Kaylin's about to die. Kaylin, are you going to die? Kaylin, are you going to die? What we're doing right now is we're putting this cannon in what they call battery. If you were in a Civil War unit, your unit would have had seven soldiers assigned to it. It took them about 30 seconds to go in the battery, but since I got a bunch of new recruits here, they're going to stumble over their feet several times. Okay? So what we're doing right now is we are lowering the elevation screw so we can raise the muzzle of the cannon. Alright, thanks for this, Charlie. I owe you one. I owe you one. Now our cannon muzzle's open, alright? I got this uh, piece of wood over here. This piece of wood right here is called the frail spike. When you move a cannon in the Civil War period, what you had to do is you move it from by the back side. It was all done by human labor. Okay? Okay. So, the way your trail spike worked here is you would have two more soldiers assigned here, two more soldiers at the back with the limber. And the soldiers are going to be at the back with the limber. Up against that wall there is a limber on a carriage. It needs to be about 15 feet behind the cannon. We're not going to fire yet. So you don't have to cover your ears yet. What they're going to do is you have the two guys at the back, two soldiers, they're setting powder and projectiles. The cannon we're going to be demonstrating today is a three-inch ordnance rifle. This means it's a rifle gun, the projectile is three inches wide. The charge of this gun was about one pound, and it had a range of about 3,100 yards. At maximum elevation, which should be close to 5,000 yards. Okay? Now, I got some tools over here if you can handle those tools forward. Somebody got them. These, these wooden, wooden handle tools. Set up at the front of the cannon. We're going to have cannon number one. What's your name, sir? Uh, my name is Chris. Chris, cannon number one. Chris, would you please raise your tool up in the air so everybody can see it? Cannon number one. Okay, cannon number one. He's going to be in charge of the gun. He's also going to ram the charge into the actual reach of the gun. Okay? Cannon number two. What's your name, Henry? Catherine. Raise your tool up high. Okay, well, Kat, Catherine, whatever she goes by, she's just private today. So what she does is that tool she carries is a worm device. Her job is to go in, worm the gun, because Civil War cannon fires gunpowder bags made out of linen. So when that cannon went off, it's not like modern artillery where you have a metallic shell, you had a bag of gunpowder and a projectile that went in behind it. When the cannon went off, the fire from that gunpowder is going to wrap around the cannon. Projectile, and in turn, is going to leave embers behind if it all doesn't get shot out of the cannon. So she needs to go in and make sure there's no more linen left in there. She's also going to be the loader. We'll be loading the cannon. Okay? All right, young lady, what's your name? Kim. Kim? Okay, Kim, if you'll go ahead and put your uh, earplugs away for a minute. And open up your pouch. Okay, hold it up in the air. She has a piece of leather which is called thumb stall. Basically, Kim, you're gonna need to take that thumb stall, put it on your left thumb, and you tie the lanyard around your wrist. Yeah, those are 
merciful. Okay, the other tool I'm going to use is this right here. This is called a vent prick. Okay? What this metric does, it's going to go in, clean out the vent, it's also going to prick a hole into that gunpowder bag, which is going to eventually allow the fire of the igniter to get into the gunpowder. So this is the vent prick. Okay? Vent prick. Vent prick. Bent first. Okay. All right. Your name, sir? Matthew. Matthew. Okay. The tool Matthew has, if you raise yours up in the air, he is going to be the guy firing the cannon. He has the lanyard. Also, if you open up your pouch inside your pouch, okay, you've got this piece right here. This is called a friction primer. This is actually your igniter. What it basically is, is a piece of wire inside a tube with gunpowder in it. When the wire gets pulled, the friction of the wire going through the gunpowder ignites the actual gunpowder, sending the jet of flame down and up, not the gunpowder charge. Anybody here ever seen a western with Clint Eastwood in it? Yes. All right. And everybody see you watch them with Clint Eastwood taking cigars, taking over the fire cannon? Yeah. That don't happen because you're going to blow your hand off because you're having a charge come up out of your, where your hand is. So if I do this, boom, there goes my hand. And from then on, I will no longer be known as Lefty. I will be Stumpy. All right? So what he's going to do is he's going to take that friction primer. He's going to hook it into the end of the lanyard, okay? All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go through a drill. Civil War soldiers working on a cannon crew drilled all the time. Just like infantry drilled marching formations. Because in a time of war, whether you were a southerner or a northerner, you would fire anywhere up to three rounds in one minute on one of these cannons. That's 20 seconds a round. So it's up. A well-lubed machine, everybody knows their job. Okay, now as far as the shells would go, this cannon would fire what was called a solid shot, which would have been a bolt, which was designed to break things. So when you saw the picture of the muzzle of that cannon in the movie, that was hit by a bolt fired from a cannon right where that monument's at. Straight shot to Fort Desperate. Straight shot to Fort Desperate that destroyed that cannon, killed the lieutenant and charged the crew, wounded two men and disabled the cannon for the rest of the battle. Okay. The other shot of the fire would be a case shot. A case shot is an anti-personnel round. Basically, it's designed for aerial burst. What it does, it flies overhead, it's got a fuse timer on it. Once the fuse explodes, that thing's going to blow up in the air, dropping shrapnel down, not only from the shell itself, but inside the shell, they had large, large lead balls. Okay? And the other rounds, this cannon would fire, but it was not very good with canister. Canister was like a large shotgun round. Anybody here shot, fire shotguns before? Okay? So basically, that would have been your very last resort anti infantry round. When that infantry is charging your position, you're going to load canister and blow the heck out of the guys charging you. Has anybody in this group seen the movie Gettysburg? So. Okay, so that last scene there where the Confederates are going over the wall, BOW! And they hit him with canister, and then they laid him out flat. That's what would happen, okay? So, we're going to go through our drill very quickly. Both our cannoneers, one and two, will be wearing gloves. Gloves on, please. Okay? We will not be firing the round yet. We're going to go through a drill. So they know what their jobs are because, like I said, these are recruits today. Here in about a couple of minutes, they'll be veterans. All right, the first command they would get, with me being in the charge of the gun right here, I would be the gunner, the sergeant. The first command they would give is called cannoneers post. At which time, cannoneer number, I'm going to kind of give you some little direction here. Cannoneer number three would come to here. Okay, outside the wheel. You're going to do the same thing on the outside of the wheel, line up with her. Cannon there one and two are going to go to the front of the gun, directly behind the muzzle, facing that direction. Come outside the wheel. Okay, come outside. There you go. That is the post position. That's like attention. I'm sure you all know what that means. 
Okay? So for the next command you would get would be called load. And upon load, what's going to happen is cannoneer number three <laughs> will grab her vent prick. You will take it off the hook there. There's a little hole in the back of the cannon. You're going to put that vent prick in that hole. You're going to go up and down a couple times to make sure it's clear. Okay? And then what she's going to do is she's going to pull her vent prick out. She's going to take her thumb stall. She's going to reach over the cannon like this, and she's going to plug that vent hole. And you're going to face that direction. <coughs> yeah, you're going to need it again. Okay? So when she does that, what she's doing is she's cutting up any oxygen that may be in that barrel. Once that's done, cannon air number two will take her worm. She will step to the side of the muzzle. She will take the worm and go in and make sure it's clear. Don't go in front of the muzzle. Stay to the side. All the way into the back. And what she's going to do is she's going to give a couple twists. Make sure there's no leftover residue in there. And once she gets done with that, she'll take her tool and you'll lay it across the axle. Then what she's going to do is she's going to stand inside the wheel. She's going to face that direction. And she's going to get ready to take that charge. Once she gets done worming, cannoneer number one will take his tool, the sponge side. He will dip it inside the sponge bucket. This right here, yep, and that's nothing but water. The idea is to cool the barrel. See all these bucks go on in, come back out. You need to spin it dry. Now, see, since he's new at this, once you get experience, you'll start doing this. Oh, okay. You basically feel when you get rid of all that extra moisture in there, okay? Once you're done with that, you're going to take the sponge in, you're going to go in through the muzzle. Just like that, don't stand in front of the cannon, just stand to the side. <laughs> okay. Stand more back to the side here. You're going to go in, hand over hand, you're going to go in all the way to the back, all the way to the back, two to the left, two to the right. Turn oh, on the left, two to the right. Now stand back a little bit further. Two left, two right, hands underneath, and pull it out like that. Go ahead and pull it out. Don't move your body, just move your hand. Just shift your hand down. Slide the hand down. You can move the other hand. Slide the hand down. Once you get done with that, turn it around. And the, no, not you, the shaft, the staff. You're going to turn it around like this, okay. and you're going to tap the muzzle. Once that muzzle gets tapped, that is the cue to bring the ammunition. As I said, you got two more men back at the limber chest. They're going to load whatever ammunition is. You're going to have another person which is going to run the ammo back and forth. Okay? That ammo which you carry in a pouch like this is just called a gunner's haversack. Gunner's haversack. <laughs> right. The reason why it's in leather and you're carrying it like this in case you get shot, you got some protection a little bit, okay? So once he taps the muzzle, go ahead and tap the muzzle. Not that hard. Then we are going to bring the round back to the liver chest. Once the round to the liver chest comes by, it will come past the gunner. I will inspect it to make sure it's the appropriate charge. I will walk to the outside of this cannon here. And from this point, I will reach over. She's going to reach over the wheel. She's going to reach inside my pouch. <laughs> Don't take anything out. Two hands. She's going to take the charge. Now she's going to take the charge like this. She's going to turn her back to the enemy. Because that way when she gets shot, she's not going to get blown up. She's going to turn around this way. She's going to reach to the front of the muzzle. Put the charge in. Grab your tool. Step back outside the wheel. This way. You won't need no. Step back outside the wheel. Okay. All right. At which time you will come in, you will ram the charge to the back. Go ahead and stick the wooden side in. Relax. Relax. Hold it straight. And what you're going to do, you're going to give it two taps, just like that. Okay, then when you bring this out, let me show you how to do it. Go walk the proper way to bring it out. Okay? Don't move. 
once you get that out, you will actually stand to the outside of the wheel. Once that is done, I will get the command of ready. Upon ready, canner number three will take her vent prick. She'll put it down inside the vent hole, putting a hole inside the gunpowder bag. Once she does that, she will watch canner number four. Canner number four will look at her. She'll take your vent prick out. You're going to put your primer inside there. You're going to take your vent prick. You're going to hold it this way. Put your hands out of the way. Sit back. Don't pull it tight or anything. Just pull it taut. Relax. Okay? Kind of get that. No, you need the right hand. What you do is a little bit more. You get a little bit more top. Sit back a little bit. About 45 feet. All right. Hey, good. Sit a little bit. Right about there. Okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to raise your left hand up high. You're going to watch her in the eyes. You're going to nod and lower your hand at the same time. That way she knows you are ready. Go ahead and do that. At which time you will step back behind the wheel. You will get ready for the command of fire. Now let me pull this out real quick. I don't want to run the guard right now. On the command of fire, you'll take your lanyard and pull it behind your back, not in front of you. Because that wire is going to come out in front of you, guess where that wire is going to go? <laughs> all right, so you want it to go behind you. All right? You all ready? Yeah! yeah. Okay, go! Oh, no, yeah! And then there's post! Post! Load! That take first. Okay, once she comes out with it, then we're going to worm it. Set the tool down. Sponge. You're good. It's wet enough. Don't worry about it. Spin it out. Spin it out. <laughs> Do me a favor, sir. Stand from the side of the Okay. Oh, yeah. I don't want to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. I'm about to feel like this. Y'all hear me? Watch me. Uh -oh. They hit that tree. <laughs> Don't hit that tree. This how you gotta do it. It got hit. I think, that's, I think it got hit by a cannon before. Oh. <laughs> I'll do one ear, you can do my range. Let's focus on this. Good! Ready! Okay, go in with your primer. 
Cannon crew has air protection. Good. Everybody, please close your ears. Close your ears, guys. Stand by. Oh, hold on. So I, like, Look I at her. Nod. Look at her. Come on, fire. Listen, get out of the way. Get away from behind the wheel. Yeah. Alright guys, so that was so candy blowing up. Charlie wants to hook it to my fans. Huh? I said it to my fans on the YouTube way. So YouTube, what's it? My my cameraman Charlie. Well that's it for this video guys. See y'all, peace out.